Hey guys, today we're gonna to be talking about how to create fake depth of field, or as you probably know it better as, portrait mode. Now, portrait mode has gained a ton of popularity in recent years, and that's been pretty much due to the advancements in computational photography. With pretty much any smartphone today, you can take really, really good photos with blurry backgrounds. Now, in the past, this was pretty much impossible unless you had a pretty fast or low aperture lens on a DSLR or mirrorless camera. So for example, this is a Canon RF 50 millimeter lens, and this has a pretty fast aperture of F 1.8. So using a lens like this, you can get some pretty cool photos with some pretty shallow depth of field, meaning some really blurry backgrounds. So with these advancements in computational photography in recent years, it might feel like smartphone users have an advantage. It's a much cheaper piece of technology when compared to lenses, and it lets you get those blurry photos that you generally need some pretty expensive lenses for. So if you're still shooting with a DSLR camera or a mirrorless camera, and you might not have the fastest aperture lens, today we're gonna to talk about how you can get the exact same results that you would out of a fast aperture lens from your existing lenses by creating that fake depth of field in post. So if you're interested in that, then definitely stick around. Now this process is actually gonna be way quicker and simpler than you guys think. You're gonna be done in just a couple of minutes depending on the speed of your machine. And the only prerequisite that you need is that A, well, first of all, you need a photo of which you wanna blur the background, and B, you need to have the latest version of Adobe Photoshop downloaded. And as of the recording of this video, that latest version is Adobe Photoshop 2022. Now, we're gonna dive right into it, so let's dive into Adobe Photoshop right now. Now, this is a photo I took in Iceland, or actually my wife took of me since I am the subject of the photo clearly, so I could not have taken this photo. But this photo was taken at an aperture of F10, which is a pretty slow aperture, meaning that the background over here is all in focus and super sharp. So this is a perfect example of a photo that you might have taken if you didn't have a fast aperture lens and if you wanted to blur out this background. So today, like I said, we're gonna walk through on how to create a fake depth of field on this photo. And again, it's gonna be super, super easy. So over here, just to skip ahead to the final result to show you guys in case you're interested in what that looks like. Um, I already went ahead and did this, so I have the layer hidden right now. But if I go ahead and activate this then this is what your final result will look like and instantly you can see how blurry the background becomes and it looks like it was taken with a pretty fast aperture lens even though it wasn't so now we're gonna walk through on how to create this effect and again it's really really simple so what you want to do is you want to select your main layer so the original image that you took and we're gonna go ahead up over here to filters and we're gonna click on neural filters again this is only gonna be available in the latest version of Photoshop. So the one I'm running is Photoshop uh, 2022 once again. So next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to click on this panel over here and you're gonna see there's an option for depth blur. Now, if you don't have it downloaded already, um, so it's already on my machine, so I have it, it'll just prompt you to download it. So go ahead and do that if you guys need to. But pretty much once you're done, it, uh, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and turn on depth blur. And now, depending on the speed of your device, it'll take a little bit of time to process and you're just gonna see a progress bar down here. And once it's done processing, the blur on your image is going to be applied. Now, once the blur is done processing, the next thing you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and select a focal point on your image on this right side panel over here. And basically what that means is that you're gonna be picking the point of the image that you don't want the blur to apply to, and it'll pretty much blur everything outside of that. So basically what you're doing here is you're identifying your subject. So I don't want my face to be blurred, so I'm gonna go ahead and set the focal point um, uh, on my face just to make sure the computer or Photoshop knows where the image should not be blurry. 
and once again it's going to start processing so depending on the speed of your device it'll take a little bit of time now i'm pretty happy with that these are the same results that i got the last time i did it so the neural filters are pretty spot on every single time and this image looks beautifully blurred from the background exactly how i wanted it so over here at the bottom i'm going to make sure that my output is set to new layer i'm just going to go ahead and click ok and with the magic of photoshop that's it we now have a perfectly blurred background that was taken on a f10 aperture lens and it really looks like it was taken on a f1.8 or f2 and honestly it looks really really good i'd never be able to tell um, the fact that this entire blur effect was created in post and i'm going to put up the picture side by side just so you guys can see the before and after of what the blur and non-blurred versions look like Okay, so we're gonna do one more image real quick before we end off this video. And you're gonna notice that this image kind of has more of a background and more of a landscape present with a smaller subject. So I just wanna show you guys how good the blurring effect really is, even if it needs to really just focus in on a smaller subject. So once again, we're gonna go up to filter, we're gonna go on neural filters, and we're gonna have the same menu pop up. Um, we're gonna turn on depth blur once again, and because we know how to set focal points now, we're gonna go ahead and set the focal point as the subject's head, and we're just gonna let our device quickly process the blur. So you're just gonna wanna wait depending on the speed of your device. Okay, cool, so now that the blur is done processing, I'm pretty happy with the results in terms of Photoshop picking out the subject and blurring out the background. I just don't think that the background is blurred enough for my taste. So I'm gonna go ahead and increase the blur strength all the way up to something like, let's just leave it at 80. So I'm gonna leave it at 80. And again, every time you make a change in this panel over here, your device will likely need to process it depending on the speed. Um, so just wait for that blur to process. So I'm pretty happy with how 80 is looking. This is pretty much what I was envisioning when I wanted the background to be blurred out. Um, so once again, we're gonna go down here, we're gonna output to new layers, and we're gonna go ahead and click OK, and we're gonna let Photoshop do its thing. And once again, the image has been outputted to a new layer, and I'm really happy with how the blur effect turned out on this image and as I toggle between this layer on and off and once again I'm going to put the images side by side so you guys can see the before and after. And that's it guys, it's really that simple to create a fake depth of field using Photoshop. So hopefully if you guys are thinking about maybe buying a faster aperture lens just to create that blurry background on photos, um, maybe it saves you a little bit of money. And if I did, then definitely hit that like button at the bottom of the video, smash it, it really helps it out. Um, if you guys are into Photoshop, tutorials, photography, all that stuff, then definitely subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate it. And I have tons of more videos coming. Um, that's all I have for this one though. And I'll see you guys in the next one. And until then, keep creating.